five. As we're here for a big. Looking for a heck of a ball. Big right. Show them two great. Well, uh, and. Panthers want to try to dig back. Very impressed with the 4A powerhouse uh, Lexington Henry Clay uh, to open the season in the Pike County Bowl and then they traveled to East Jessamine the following week and, uh, and got beat there. And, but uh, since then they've won three in a row and uh, been playing really well, which they played well in those games. They lost to Henry Clay 31 to nothing. The score was much, score was much closer than, than that uh, up to late in the ball game. So. Uh, but they played well, and of course, uh, Belfry comes in here with a four and one record, and uh, looking like they're going to contend for a, another state championship. They've won two out of the last three, and uh, were in the state semifinals last year, just a couple of plays away from going back to Louisville for the state championship. So, well, absolutely, and that one loss that uh, Belfry had was to Ashland uh, Blazer down there, 28 to 27 in overtime. So. Nothing to be ashamed of there because I think they're is actually a 3A, 3A or 3A school, school yeah, so you know and a very good one. Yeah, they are. So you know, both teams coming in with impressive starts to their season, playing impressive competition. You know, Belfry with the big Pike County Bowl win, of course the one loss coming in there, making them, and more, most people will call them the power of the 15th region behind Johnson Central right now. Of course, Johnson Central a 3A school 3A as well, school and they're well, undefeated right. right now. So these are probably three of the top programs in Eastern Kentucky, well, year in and year out, especially this season. Uh, yes, they are. And uh, I, like you said, uh, Belfry's pretty well dominated the series as of late, won, won the last five games. But I feel like uh, Pikeville has closed the gap with, uh, with the talent they've got this year, the speed they've got on defense. And uh, I, I look for this to be a, a very competitive ball game. Oh, I think so, Ken. We've talked about that uh, all week, you know. Belfry coming off of uh, a three especially great seasons as they won uh, two back-to-back -back state championships, went to the state semifinals last season, and, and hope, hopefully they're going to try to get back to that uh, stage again this year. Of course, Pikeville, the team that's going to be a contender possibly to get down to Louisville this year as well because odds on favorite to win the district and probably the region this year. Uh, yes, yes, I think so with the great start they've had this year and, and playing those tough, tough games early, even though they, they got beat, uh, that, that's going to help them down the road, I think. You know, you got to play up to the competition, you know, that, that you want to face later on in the season. So they, they have already played against some teams that probably have state championship uh, implications. You know, Henry Clay, a team that a lot of people predicted to win the state championship last year and another very talented team with a chance to go back again right this year. They're still undefeated in that class 4A, still just rolling over people and playing, playing well. But uh, one, of the, one of the scary things about this Belfry team is they, they, pri they tend to start out a little slow at the beginning of the season and, and progressively get better. They started out strong this year and uh, looked, looked as sharp as I've seen them early in the year so far. Well, now we, I've talked to them, and I've talked to a lot of fans this week because this is the talk of uh, Pikeville and Belfry this week, and everybody's saying the same thing. You know, Belfry, a team that normally starts off a little slower and builds up, and a lot of the Belfry fans are saying that this team has gotten better every week, and this may be, and I know we talked about it at the Pike County Bowl, may be the best defensive start I've seen for a Belfry team in recent memory. Uh, absolutely. They're just uh, tremendous in, the, in that opening game against uh, Newport Central Catholic in the Pike County Bowl. Won it 7-6, to six, so it was a defensive struggle, and uh, Newport won the one of the better offenses in the state. Of course, they're a class single A school. Got one of the top backs in the state, and Belfry just uh, annihilated him. He, uh, Michael Vickers carried the ball 17 times that night, got only 47 yards. And uh, both these teams uh, have so much uh, speed and athleticism on defense. They're very impressive. So Yeah. Well, I think so. You know, the big thing, too, about, uh, about this game, too, is the way Pikeville has started out uh, – Offensively, they, it's kind of an unconventional offense most people don't see. I think it's more of a, a wing T offense, and they'll run a lot of different looks out of that. And that's one of the things that some of the Belfry uh, fans and coaches were talking before the ball game. You know, they've got a lot of different looks they can give you out of that offensive set and kind of confuse the defense. Absolutely. It is, can be quite confusing. And uh, 
they've got uh, got some talented uh, talented backs, and uh, so has Belfry. We'll talk talk more about uh, some of the uh, players to look out for tonight when we come back. But right now, we're going to send it back to the station for a break. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with more pregame activities right here on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports Network. Fall dawns on the mountains of Kentucky. Spectacular colors blanket the land. And the fields. <laughs> Appalachian Wireless is proud to support our local schools, both on the fields and in the classrooms. Join us in cheering on your hometown team. You always get more at Appalachian Wireless. What are people saying about Pikeville College? Pikeville College is about the students. When you come on campus, you can tell by just the look on people's faces that they really do care. At Pikeville College, it's all about the students. Pikeville College is affordable. There's a way if they really want to attend Pikeville, it's affordable. Pikeville College is a great education. I feel like I'm going to be totally ready for graduate school. Pikeville College is changing our world one graduate at a time. We would like to include you. Billy Maynard and the staff at Maynard Insurance Agency want to invite you to one of their two locations to get your next insurance quote. It's no wonder they're known as the insurance problem solvers. Billy and his staff and agents have been serving Eastern Kentucky for over 16 years with some of the best deals around on auto, home, life, and health insurance. Give them a try today. They're located on US 23 at Harold with a second location on Route 7 near McGoffin County High School. See Maynard Insurance today. We're back here at Pikeville High School as just about uh, five and a half minutes away from the start of this one, the Pikeville Panthers and the Belfry Pirates. And uh, Charlie, this is one of these games we look forward to every year. It's always, uh, even though Belfry, as we said, has won the last five, it's always entertaining. Both teams really go after each other. Well, you know, they got such great fan bases too, Ken. This place is packed. Right. And even on a kind of a cool and almost and a semi-wet night here, of course, you don't really notice that as much with this turf. But by the time this one kicks off, you won't be able to see anything but people all the way around the fence and in all the chairs there'll even be a bunch sitting over in the baseball stands here before this one's over yes it will it's it's a great atmosphere every time these two get together and uh, should be a great ball game we want to talk about some of the uh, players to look out for here tonight uh, some really fine running backs in this game first of all for uh, uh, pikeball uh, this sophomore daniel Harmon, he's just tremendous charlie we yep. saw that we saw this young man get 127 yards against henry clay's great defense in that opening game and uh, He's a tough running back. And, of course, uh, Tim Honaker, who's a, who's a tremendous athlete, great. Uh, he and Ted, his twin brother, are tremendous on defense, but they're both also very good on offense. Ted carries the ball out of the backfield. Tim, the quarterback now, after uh, John Michael Mayo went out with that concussion in the opening game, and uh, Tim doing a good job there. He's a, he's a dual threat, uh, great, great runner with great speed and, and strength, but uh, he, he can also throw it. So uh, there, there's some... Uh, talent on this team. There is, you know, Pikeville a good looking team and you know, they're a fairly young team too, Ken, if you'll look down through there and see you know, they don't have a whole lot of seniors uh, on this team this year playing, especially at their uh, uh, skill positions in the backfield. And one thing that you'll really notice uh, is, especially with this uh, wing tee that he runs, where they can snap the ball straight to a running back or anybody in the backfield, you're going to get a lot of uh, quick hitting plays up the middle for Pikeville. Again, that's something that the Belfry defense is really going to have to adjust to. Right, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons for Harmon's success against Henry Clay. Most of those carries he got were direct snaps to him in that backfield. And it, uh, Henry Clay was confused, and uh, he, he ran hard and had a great ball game. And uh, they've also got, got some talent out at wide receiver, good speed out there with Jacob Sword and uh, Mitch Jackson. Some of these guys can catch the ball too, so uh, very talented. On the uh, defensive side of the ball, these uh, Panthers got some uh, uh, really fine ball players as uh, – one of them in particular, Casey Rowe, won a state championship this summer in weightlifting for his class. He was the state champion. And I understand uh, Brad Bryant, who's a very strong lineman out here for the Panthers, uh, came in second in the state in, in his class. But, uh, and then you got, as I mentioned earlier, the Honeaker twins there with that great speed on defense. And uh, uh, they're just a, a talented group of young men yeah, out I here. Yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, of course, Belfry, uh, no slouches themselves as uh, we're getting ready to do the national anthem here again. Right, and then we'll, uh, we come back, we'll talk some more about uh, some of Belfry's players. It's Pikeville. Mm -hmm. 
Mike as we're getting ready to set for the pregame prayer and then the national anthem. Prayer here at the Hamley Complex. We'll step out, take a break. When we come back, we'll have the coin toss. We'll be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports. And welcome back as we're just about ready for the opening kickoff here at Pikeville and Belfry as the captain's out at the middle of the field for the coin toss. And, uh, Charlie, we've not talked much about uh, individual players for the Belfry Pirates, but uh, I'll tell you what, they've got, got a fine backfield back yeah, there. Yeah, they do. Uh, Corey, uh, uh, Corey Chapman, a fine running back there, had a great uh, season last year as a junior. He's a uh, very talented back and uh, one of the one of the hardest runners that, that we've, we've seen in a few years, Dustin May, the, the uh, fullback for Belfry. He's just uh, one heck of an athlete, a hard, runs so hard and hard to bring down, and he's got good speed, too, when he gets on the outside or breaks one. Yeah, and, and Gerald Epling been a real surprise this year, Ken, especially on the defensive side. He's the other halfback over there. He's also played great in the uh, secondary for Pike, what we saw in the early going. Right, I think he was uh, MVP of the uh, Pike County yep. Bowl in the game against Newport, and it, just unbelievable how many big defensive plays he made that night. Yeah. How many How many big tackles Oh, yeah, he absolutely. Made. This kid weighs 145 pounds. Yep. I mean, uh, he's, he's a tremendous ball player. Yeah. You know, they got Andrew Elkins there at the quarterback this year, too, and that's something that Belfry hadn't had in, a, in the last few years is this is the team that can actually throw the ball. We were talking about that before the season, and, Ken, don't be surprised if you see Belfry put the football in the air tonight. Do what? I have oh, that. Okay. I have I have a little a thought there. You know, you okay. may see some play-action passing out of the right, Pirates they made tonight. A, made a change at quarterback here a couple of weeks ago, I think, and, uh, and they're starting to throw the ball a little more. So I'll tell you what, with that potent ground game they've got and you, uh, you start mixing in that pass, they're going to be uh, make, tough to defend. Make the defense respect the passing game. That's right. You know. Uh, another Rook. young man we want to mention here, too, that also uh, occasionally gets carries in that backfield is Ivan Lee. But, boy, I'll tell you, Ivan has been big on defense this year. He's a, he's a heck of a defensive player for these Pirates. We're about ready to go. Panthers out here at the 40-yard line, really fired up. I tell you what, they are. You know, the fans down here in front of us are pretty fired up here tonight too. So, I expect you know the Belfry fans just kind of sitting over there waiting for the kickoff. You know, and the the Pipeville fans are trying to defend their own house here, though, Ken. They're going to get some excitement going. Yes, they are. I think it's going to be a very exciting ball game. Glad you joined us here on the Intermountain Sports Network. And, uh, We've got a, uh, another game this weekend on WPRG TV5 uh, being filmed tonight as uh, Dr. Don, uh, Chuck Scoville, and uh, Larry Cecil are over at Eastridge tonight for a big district matchup as uh, Eastridge is hosting Shelby Valley. And uh, so that's a big game over there. Should be a, be a good ball game. I, I think so. You know, of course, looks like uh, Belfry will receive here tonight as Pike will we'll kick the football off. So we'll get to see that Belfry offense first here, Ken. And back deep for the Pirates is number six, Corey Chapman, and also number 18, Gerald Epling. So those two of those young men we talked about may get to touch the ball early. Yes, yeah, the Panthers down here with Coach Mike Jackson getting last-minute instructions. Of course, Ken, we want to thank uh, Rick Bentley for being here tonight with his uh, stats program. So we'll get some uh, good computerized stats here tonight for the ball game. Oh, yes. Yes, we love it when Rick keeps those stats. He does a great job, and it makes their job easier. Makes us sound plum professional, don't it? Absolutely. <laughs> plum professional. Plum professional. <laughs> oh. As uh, Max Bufunda will be kicking off for the Panthers. You know, Max got quite a leg uh, on that oh, young man has. out there. Missed a game or two earlier in the year there was an uh, injury, but uh, he's, he's back now and a uh, really, really good leg. Yeah, so we're ready to get this one underway. The Funda approaches the ball and kicks it short. It's taken at the 20 yard line. One of the up backs came back and took yeah, he's it. Got and plenty he's got plenty of room. All kinds of room up across the 40 to the 44 yard line. Devin Cohair, number 11. So, Cohair and Chapman uh, collided with each other back there. Chapman coming up on the ball, Cohair going back on it, and uh, the center fielder didn't call it there. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to call that man off coming out of the infield. Right. But a nice return, 24 yard return by Cohair. So, great field position for the Pirates to start this opening drive of the game. And it's Andrew Wilkins under center, only a sophomore. Hand off straight up the middle and real. That was 
that Dustin May. It was. And he may have got a yard. It's uh, Ted Honaker. He drilled May. On yeah, he first, did. First play. Yeah, I tell you what, though, Ken, I, you know, what you're going to expect out of this Belfry team here tonight is going to be a lot of wishbone. They're going to do that triple option like they always do. But you'll watch them pound that Pikeville defensive line this pro entire first half. As Elkins under center, high formation behind him. Hand off again to May. He's breaking tackles. He's across midfield down to the Pikeville 47 yard line, getting close to the first down. You know, it looks like Pipe trying to uh, punish Elkins back there, being the young uh, quarterback. Man, they're hitting him on every every play right after he lets go of that football on the handoff. Oh. Maybe trying to shake him up a little bit, being a little bit inexperienced in there as a sophomore. As May picked up eight yards on that carry, that leaves the Pirates with a third and one now. Elkins lining up under center. Full backfield there. Eckling May and Chapman, and it's Dustin May again off left tackle, and he's got the first down as he gets down to the 45, a two-yard pickup. Belfry gets the initial first down of the game. I'll tell you, you know, Belfry uh, doing exactly what we expected him to do, Ken. I was telling some people today, you know, watching this series as long as we have, that uh, Philip Haywood is going to take that ball, and he is going to try to pound that Belfry front line and, and those running backs at this Pipeville team because he's got more numbers than they do. Elkins under center, and we've got movement. Saw Pipeville jump off offside, but now they may have been drawn because there were several players jumped there at the same time. It's going to be oh, on Pipeville. Offside Pipeville. And, you know, Ken, we've got a great officiating crew out here tonight. Let me see if I've got the list for you. Uh, Robert Staggs, Marty Gormley, Chris Simpson, Bill Greer, and Brian Ratliff, uh, a veteran crew out here for this ball game. It's the A-team. Yep. Why didn't you ask me to, to name those, Charlie? I'm going to save those you for like you to, till later. You like to do that at those college games. That's right. Elkins takes the snap, hands it off. No, he keeps it, pitches it back, and that's Epling down the left side, and he may have another first down. Got it by about a yard if I see the spot right, but Belfry with a player getting up slowly in the backfield, Ken. That's that is the quarterback, yep. Yeah, they drilled him again, Charlie. Like you said, they're going after this sophomore quarterback. Yeah, I think that's Belfry's, uh, I mean, Pipeville's defensive strategy right now. Let's shake him up. Let's see because, you know, you try to take away the leader of this offense uh, for the Belfry Pirates and maybe, maybe slow him down a little bit. Like I said, Andrew Elkins is a 6'1", 154-pound sophomore. And he just moved into the starting position a couple of weeks ago. He's under center, wishbone formation. Gives it off to Chapman over the right side and nothing there. So he got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe. Good job up front by the Panthers. He looks like he's going to lose about a yard, Ken. They're going to move it back to the 35-yard line, maybe yard, and, yard a and a half. Tim Honaker on the bottom of the pile there. Like I say, I don't expect Belford to pass it early, but uh, – I think they'll keep pounding it up the middle here in this first put of now. Pipewell keeps coming that strong. You may see on trial a little dump pass across the middle. All right. And Pipe will not respect them. Ten men up in the box almost. Now they back out. Second and 11. Dustin May quickly off left tackle, and he got three yards down to the 32. So that's going to leave third and long now for Belfry. It'll be third and about nine, eight and a half or nine, and he's down And the Pirates. They've got an official timeout out here. Let's see. Here comes the Belfry coaching staff coming onto the field. 9.04 to play here in the first quarter. No score in this uh, football game. Looks like it is at the sure line, I yeah. believe. And they're getting him up. Uh, well, they thought it was going to get him up quickly, getting up to a setting up position. Looks like we may be in for a uh, longer break than we expected, Ken. So we'll take a break and be back in just a moment on the Intermountain Sports. That was Rose, the young lineman that got hurt, uh, helped off the field and looked like he was doing all right, Ken. Uh, yes, he did. As Elkins in the shotgun here on third and nine. He hands it off. No, he keeps it himself around the left side. And, oh, what a tackle out there. Number 24, Daniel, Daniel Harmon. Harmon. My, my, I thought Elkins was going to get a chunk of yardage. Yes, Harmon came out of nowhere. Made the tackle down at the 31-yard line, just short of the 30. That's going to lead fourth and about seven now for Belfort. 
Play action pass, Ken. They just set it up on that play. They'll come out in that same formation. Yes, Belfry breaks the huddle. They're going for it. Of course, it's four down territory at the 30 yard line. Elkins in the shotgun. He's back looking to throw it across the left side and incomplete. Intended out there for number 87. That's John Young and Daniel Harmon on the coverage right there with him. So Pockwell takes over on downs, first and 10 at their own 31 yard line. And let's see what the Panthers offense can do here. Well, you know, you expect the defensive struggle early in a ball game with uh, two teams of this caliber. Belfry picked up a pair of first downs before being stopped on four downs. And let's see, Pikeville coming out of the huddle slowly here again. I'm looking for my 25 second clock. They don't have any end zone of these games, do they? No, they don't. Start, starting to get some. Tim Honaker in the shotgun to open it up. One back on each side of him. Two receivers wide right, one to the left. Long snap cap. He fakes the handoff, keeps it himself, running around the left side and nowhere to go there. He gets hit for a loss. Looks like he got hit right at the 30 yard line. Can't be about a half yard loss and uh, great pursuit that time by those Belfry Pirates. Yes, it was. It'll be second and 11 now for the Panthers. He faked the handoff to Ted Honeaker, but kept it himself in a good pursuit there by Belfry. As Pikeville breaks the huddle. Hello. Yeah. Tim Honecker in the shotgun once again. Okay. Harmon to his left and Ted Honecker to his right. We've got a flag down. Yes. Evidently, uh, somebody lined up offside. Let's see, rubber stacks. It's illegal motion on the Pikeville Panthers. So they'll back them up another five yards. Oh, I'll tell you what, the Panthers are struggling a little bit there, Ken. It's two penalties on the Panthers now. So it's going to be second down and 16 now. Honaker going under center. This No, he backs up, back in the shotgun. Long snap count once again. And he fakes the handoff to Harmon, throws it, and threw it a little bit behind the intended Josh receiver. Staggs. Josh Staggs, and Staggs reached back, almost pulled it in, but uh, boy, he was open out there, Charlie. Good play call. He faked that handoff to Harmon and uh, just threw it a little bit behind Staggs. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, he did a good job, and Staggs was wide open. He sure was. Had some room to run there had he been able to catch it. So this is third and long now for the Panthers. It'll be third and 16 from their own 25 yard line. Tim Honecker in the shotgun. Daniel Harmon, the lone setback this time. He's got trips to the right. One receiver out here to the left. Long snap count. He takes it. And it's a draw play to Harmon. And nowhere to go. In fact, he's probably going to lose a yard, maybe two. T, we talked about this uh, Belfry defense, and they're playing well here on this first series of football, Ken, and putting uh, Pitewell in an obvious punting situation here. Absolutely, that's going to be fourth and 17 now. Back to uh, Pontiac. Clay Elliott. Clay Elliott, number 52. Back deep to return, Dustin May and Corey Chapman. That could be dangerous. Either one of those gets a hold of the football. Absolutely, man. We've got another flag down. Let's see what we get here. The Pirates are saying it's on. Uh, or Pikeville, and I think the officials are going to agree. It's going to be all sides. Illegal procedure again, so somebody moving there. Backs them all the way up now to the 19 yard line. It's going to be fourth and 21. And uh, only Hal Mummy would go for it in this, this <laughs> case. We'll do a fake punt. Clay Elliott waits the snap, he gets it, kicks it away. A high kick, but short. Hits at the 44, takes a great bounce for Belfry, and it's going to be down at the Pikeville 35 yard line. About a 16 yard punt. Well, that's about a four yard, well, that's actually Bel Belfry probably better field position than when they gave the football up a while ago, Ken, because of the penalties. Yes. 
So uh, Elliott so. got it got it high in the air, but it just didn't get any distance on it. Then it hit out there around the 44 and took a great bounce back the other way for Belfry. Elkins under center. Hands it off over the left side to Chapman, and he gets nailed immediately. Picked up one yard. Tim Honaker hit him first. Yeah, they're going to mark him down at about the 34, second down and nine. But I tell you, both teams coming to play defensively here, especially in this first half, Ken, and I think that's something we really expected because both of these teams have started off so strong on the defensive end this season. Right. Second and nine. Elkins under center. Up in the wishbone formation, and here's another flag down. Somebody may have lined up. Bill Pipe will lined up off sides, Ken, in that neutral zone. Yes, that's four penalties already on the Panthers. Well, for yet to commit a penalty, so that's a big advantage there for the Pirates. It's going to leave second down and four now, all down at the 29-yard line. And tell you, you're see right now, we've got some stats we'll give you here in a second. Elkins under center, wishbone formation behind him. Hand off to Dustin May, and he goes nowhere. And who's that 55 for Pop with there, Charlie? He's right at the tail. Chris the meeting. Gibson. Good job. 6'2, 220 pound junior. No gain on the play by May. It's going to be third and four now for Belfry. Belfry has gained, uh, as of that, uh, this before this series, they've had seven plays for 21 yards, Ken, all of them on the ground here in this first quarter. Pike will two. Uh, Ended up with uh, minus one yards on their three and out that time. Elkins lines up under center. Got a receiver out wide to the left. He hands it off to May. May trying to break free and picked up maybe one yard on the play as Pikeville playing tough up front. They are. But you notice something, Ken, right now is what I'm thinking Pipe or Belfer is trying to do. They're trying to set up that play-action pass I've been talking about. As you, Elkins has really been kind of floating out and getting ready to make some throws here. I think so, and we got a personal foul on the Panthers. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't see who it was, Charlie, but I did see somebody dive on the pile. I thought maybe the ball came loose because the Panther uh, dove in there, uh, but evidently just, just piled on. So it's a huge penalty. Going to give Belfry a first down down at the 14-yard line. Well, you know, penalties right now have been a killer for the uh, Pike Wolf Panthers, Ken. They had 15 on their first offensive drive, 15 yards. That's 30, at least, at least 40 or 35 yards in penalties on at least five calls so far in this first quarter. Right. Uh, Belfry's picked up more yards on penalties than they have uh, offensively. Elkins under center. Hands it off to Chapman. He finds a hole over the right side and nearly broke it. Got tripped up at the last minute there. He's down inside the 10 to about the 7. Pick up of 7 yards on the play. Corey Chapman. Belfry tough down in this red zone, as they call it. And uh, be interesting to see, what kind of, see if they mix it up in here or just keep trying to pound it in the middle against this uh, Pikeville defense. Second and three. Andrew Wilkins under center. Hands it off over the left side and not much there. I think that was May on the carry. There it was, Dustin May. Uh, no gain on the play. So it's going to be third and three now. So third down and three. This obvious four down territory here for it. Well, well no, they, they, they got a pretty good kick kicker, it, yeah. I believe. They, they may see him go for the field goal if they don't make this one. Depends on how close he gets to that uh, four-yard line, I'd say, Ken. Elkins hands it off. Corey Chapman finds a hole on the right side, out. and uh, I think he's probably got the first down. It's going to be close. If he's Dutton, they will go for it here on fourth and one, I would think. Yeah, it's close enough for a measurement here. Uh, I believe he's got it. I yeah, think he has. Yes, Robert Stakes gives the signal. He did okay. get the first down. I didn't know Robert could see that far across the field now, did you? Oh, he, he's, he's sharp for his age. <laughs> so it's first and goal now for Belfry from just inside the four-yard line. So uh, it's going to be tough for the Panthers to keep them out of that end zone now with the four shots at it from the four. As the Pirates break the huddle, Elkins under center. And another flag down. 
Offside pike boy, and I tell you, the Panthers killing themselves with penalties, Charlie. Yeah, they just, uh, Ken, they're trying to get that jump on the ball and getting up on the line of scrimmage, and they're just lining up in that neutral zone. So that's half the distance to the goal, a two-yard penalty, and it'll be first and goal now from the two. So that's, I believe that's, uh, what, six penalties? I six think penalties, Panthers, probably about 42 yards, I would imagine, yeah. if I'm guessing right. 220 to go in the first quarter. First and goal, Elkins under center, ball at the two-yard line. And off to Dustin May, and he gets stopped just short of the goal. No, he's in. Barely got in, so touchdown Belfry. They go up six to nothing with two minutes, 11 seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah. And like I said, Charlie, they, Belfry's picked up uh, more yards on penalties than they have uh, yeah. on, on offense. Yeah, so, that's uh, true. You know, right now, Pike will uh, struggling to stay, especially on the offsides penalty, Ken. They've had at least three of them on this drive. Cost them at least 12 yards. A little bit harder work for Ernest as he has uh, done a pretty good job, though, on the extra points especially. And, and I've not seen him kick a field goal yet. But, uh, of course, Belfry doesn't kick many of those, do they? No, they don't have to. He's got a good leg, so this shouldn't be a problem for him. Ball down at the 15. He boots it straight through, and it's 7 to nothing. Belfry over Pikeville. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Intermountain Sports. To Pikeville High School, 7 to nothing. Pirates now with 2.11 to go in the first quarter. And, Ken, you know, Belfry has looked good, but Pikeville has really put themselves in a hole with penalties here in this first quarter. Yes, they have. And the Coach Mike Jackson out there talking with uh, Robert Staggs. And speaking of the devil, Rick Bentley hands us over that six penalties for 36 yards in the first quarter. Belfry has a total of 35 yards uh, total offense. So they have one more yard in penalties than penalties, they have in total though. offense. As Glenn Ernst prepares to kick it off, back deep for Pike was going to be Ted Honaker, Daniel Harmon, and Jacob Sword. Three fast backs back there to return. Yeah, you know, Pike will really uh, with a chance to make do some damage here with the speed they've got back there right now. Ernest approaches the ball, boots it away, and coming up to take it, Ted Honaker at the 19, running the reverse. McAnallen around the left side across the 25, breaks a tackle and taken down at the 28. And number 87 on that tackle for the Belfry Pirates. That is Josh or John Young, 5'11", 160 pound junior. Well, he got him, came from behind and got him. Yeah. That, uh, that was uh, Houston McAnallen on the reverse there. Nice run, and they spotted up at the 30. So first and 10, Pockwell from that point. It's a big drive here, Charlie Pike. Well, yeah, it uh, is. Don't need to go three and out here and get it right back to these Pirates. 2.02 to go in the first quarter. It's seven to nothing. Belfry, Honaker in the shotgun. And a direct snap to Harmon over the right side. He's running hard. Got hit at the line of scrimmage, but pushed forward, picked up for three yards. Should be about second down and seven. Harmon with a great job there. He got hit hard, Ken, but really worked his way ahead to pick up that you know, positive yard. They're going to actually give him four on the four play. yards. Well, he did. I, I thought he was going nowhere there. He got drilled at the line of scrimmage, but he is a hard runner, strong young man, only a sophomore. So second down and six now coming up for the Pike Bowl Panthers. Honecker in the shotgun. They're shifting around over <laughs> here. And another flag down. Official, official timeout. timeout. Oh, Pike will take the timeout. Time so one minute, 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's seven to nothing. Belfry over Pikeville. We're back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports. And we're back at Pikeville High School. A minute, 18 to go in the first quarter. Belfry leading Pikeville. Pikeville with possession. They've got a second down and six at their own 34-yard line. As Tim Honaker in the shotgun awaiting the snap. Long 
long snap count, and it's a direct snap to Harmon again over the left side. He breaks a tackle out at the 40, still on his feet across midfield, carrying Corey Chapman with him. He's down to the 43-yard line of Belfry. A 23-yard pickup by Daniel Harmon, and I'll tell you, this, uh, this young man's a special back, Charlie. He is. You know, Belfry pulled up in the and tied up on the line of scrimmage that time, Ken, trying to shut down that running game. He got a good block to get through the line of scrimmage, and then he just started carrying people down the field. Great run there by Harmon. Corey Chapman was on his back at about the 50, and he yeah. carried him about seven yards. On Acre in the shotgun. Who knows who's going to get the snap. It's Ted Honaker this time over the right side. Some nice blocking. He breaks a tackle, and he gets down to the 37-yard line, pickup of about six. So, you know, Pike will really uh, starting that direct snap right now, and it's working out for them, Ken, as they're getting the ball uh, up to that line of scrimmage a lot quicker that way. Right. We call it a gain of five. It's ball between the 37 38. Second down and five. Pike will break the huddle quickly. Jacob Sword split out wide to the left here. On Acre. And it's a direct snap to Harmon again over the left side this time. And man, he's breaking tackles again. He's down close to the first down. May have it. Depends on the spot. He's going to be close. You're right. And once again, it looked like nowhere to go, Charlie. And yep. somehow he forces his way through that line. You know, I've been impressed with his leg strength as he has really done a good job once he gets hit of continuing to uh, move the football. And they're going to give him another first down on the play. So it'll be first and 10 Pikeville. And that'll probably be the last play of the first half or first quarter with Belfry leading it 7-0. We'll be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports. And welcome back to Pikeville High School, 7 to nothing. Uh, Belfry at the end of the first quarter, Ken, and looked like Belfry might be going to dominate, and then all of a sudden this last drive, Pikeville has been able to move the ball very effectively against this Pirate defense. They sure have, as uh, Daniel Harmon, a couple of really good runs. Ted Honaker, a nice run, and uh, getting those direct, direct snaps in that backfield in this uh, version of the wing tee. There are many versions of this oh, wing absolutely. tee, aren't there? <laughs> yeah, one of the most versatile offenses you'll see for a running team. Honaker awaiting the snap. And it's Ted Honaker taking the snap. Trying to sweep right. He turns the corner. He's across the 25 and driven out of bounds down at the 23-yard line. I'll tell you what. Close to uh, another first down. Pike were really moving the ball well, Ken. Matter of fact, that gives them, at the end of the first quarter, they had 37 yards uh, on the ground, all of their yards on the ground here in the first play, first uh, half or so far, and they've done a real good job moving the ball on this drive. They've done moved the ball extremely well. As Ted Honecker picked up nine yards on that carry, it's second and one now for the Panthers. This would be a great time for a play action pass. You got a point, it could be. Sword split out wide left. Long snap count once again. Honecker takes it. He's back looking to pass. Firing it deep for the left side of the end zone. And Sword can't hold on to it. He had it there. but Pass maybe a little bit behind him, but when he got his hands on. Yes, he did. So nice you know, throw there. Yeah. yeah. He had some space between himself and the defender. So Ran a good route. You know, it's a... Yeah, it's a Pikeville has had a couple of good looks on the passing game, but they've not been able to connect on them. And they've, but they have done such a great job moving the ball on the ground here. That really was a free play, they feel like, because it's right. leaves them still with a third and one. Third and one, and then if necessary, they can go forward on fourth at this point on the field. Tim Honaker under center, look for the quarterback keeper here. And he gets nailed immediately, but he's still on his feet fighting hard. He, he may have got it, I think, think so. They're going to bring up oh, Robert said it's good. He's across the 22 yard line. So he, he did pick up the first down. Good effort there by Tim Honaker. And it'll be first and 10 Pikeville now at the Belfry 22. Honaker got an equipment problem here. I, yeah, he may have to set out a play on this one again. They called a official timeout. Maybe they're going to put a shoe on though. I don't know. Yeah, they're going to let him. 
gone. Yeah, I guess I guess with that, that situation, you can't yeah. stay in. If it's an injury, you have to stop play. You got to come out for one play. Yeah, they're giving him time to get it laced up good and tight. He probably needs it out there tonight. <laughs> Call him shoeless Joe Jackson, yep. that he stayed out there and played like that. Yeah, they've started to clock back on him now. As, uh, he's going to have to hurry up to avoid the delay here, and they're going to get in there and run this play very quickly. Yes, Honecker in the shotgun. Quick count, and Ted Honecker takes it, direct snap, and falls down. Lost his balance. And I'm, not sure he got, I'm not sure he had a handle on that football. Key. I think he was juggling and wanted to make sure he covered it up good. May have been, but he lost... Uh, about three yards back at the 25 now. So it'll be second and 13. And I think one of the things, Charlie, because that was the uh, time. They, they knew they were yep. short of time and everybody rushing to get in position and uh, rushing to play. And they didn't work real well. So here we go, second and 13. Tim Honaker under center right now. One of the few times I formation behind him. Another long count. He pitches to Harmon. It's on the ground. And I think Pikeville gets it. I'll tell you what, you know, Pikeville have done what done so well on this drive, and they're kind of falling apart here, Ken, on these last two or three plays. Right. Yes. Harmon recovers it down at the 22, picked up the uh, three yards they lost on the previous play. It's going to be third and 10 now. Actually, about 10 and a half. Big play coming up here. It is. It's a huge play and here. And you know. for some reason, the clock's not the running, clock, yeah. Charlie. That's, that's a mistake. That, that was not an incomplete pass. No. It was a fumble. Not sure what cut. happened there. Yes, Honeaker in the shotgun. There it goes. Direct snap to Ted Honeaker, and he, he got real. nailed. Who was that young man that I'm hit I'm waiting to see who gets up off of that one. Was up there to the left, 20. Oh, that's no, 28. 28 is the man that really nailed him. 28 is Charlie Dotson. So it's fourth and 10 now, Pike. Boy, and that's probably a little out of Pafunda's range, maybe, Ken, is be about a 40-yarder. Yeah. Yes. Probably going to go for it. So uh, Mitch Jackson check in the game there, come in, the big wide receiver. He splits out wide. They've got, in fact, they got trips to the left. Ted Honaker out to the left, Jacob Sword and Jackson. Fourth and 10. Daniel Harmon, the long setback back there with Honaker. Honaker takes it. Fakes it. He sees the hole. Takes off and not much there. He's still on his feet. Breaking tackles. What a run by Tim Honaker. It's a touchdown Pikeville. Unbelievable. He was stopped about three different times, Charlie, and somehow kept driving those legs and broke free for a 22-yard touchdown run. Well, you know, broken play there. Looks like, looked like he was going to pull up and throw it. Saw that opening. Came up and ran into a bunch of Belfry Pirates. Looked like they were going to bring him down for a minimal gain on the play. Then he finally gets out to the right side, and once he hits the sideline, he just takes off. Great run by Tim Honecker. What a play. The Fonda ready to kick it. Mitch Jackson, the holder. 9-18 to go in the first half. Here's the snap. Kick up. And it's good. We're all tied up. 7-7. Seven to seven As Tim Honecker takes it 22 yards into the end zone. We're going to send it back to the station. We'll be back in 30 seconds on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports. And welcome back to the Hamley Athletic Complex. 9.18 to go now in the first half, and Pikeville has tied it up 7-7, seven to seven, Ken. And we've got quite a ball game going this early going now. Ball F. As we expected, it would be a good one so far. It's, it's been a really good ball game. And uh, I tell you, that's a big, big play, big drive there for yeah. Pikeville. They, uh, they needed that after all the penalties early in the ball game that, uh, that hurt them. Well, let's see, Ken, that one, if I can get my light out where I can read it, took uh, nine, was it nine minutes and 18 seconds, uh, 11 plays and 70 yards. Well, 918 left in the quarter. Didn't, the drive didn't take 918. As Pafonda ready to kick it away. Back deep is Epling and Chapman for Belfry. 
the Thunder. Nice kick. Good high kick inside the 10. Back at the 6. That's Corey Chapman. And he's coming up the middle of the field. Across the 30. Gets a great block. He's across midfield. He could go. The 40. The 30. Cuts back. Gets a block from Epling. He's inside the 10. And pushed out. Of, no, he got in the end zone. Touchdown, Belfry. Yeah. Chapman made a great move, Ken, about the 20-yard line. Had a man, had the perfect angle. He just kind of stops and shoves him out of the way and then, and then gets another block, and he's gone. Absolutely. Great run by Corey Chapman. 94 yards for the touchdown. And, you know, Belfry said they're going to answer. They answered very quickly on that one. That was a huge momentum play right there for the Pirates to take, uh, all, take the wind out of Pikeville sails quickly that time. Boy, what a run by Chapman. Great blocking there, too. Gerald Epling, I think he was through this last block down here that uh, freed him up to get on into the end zone. Glenn Ernest in to kick it. It's up, and it's good. So Belfry on top now, 14 to seven with 9.02 to play in the first half. And uh, don't go anywhere, folks. This is gonna be a good one. Fight well, very capable of uh, returning the, the favor, thing, aren't you? With the great, great runners they've got, too. So uh, this some um, turned out to be quite a ball game. Coach Mike Jackson, uh, very disappointed in his team here. He's uh, given up that touchdown run on the kickoff. Very animated out there in the huddle, explaining that to uh, somebody over there, Ken. Just heard a score down here. Eastridge leading Shelby Valley 12 to nothing. Shelby Valley trying to pick up their second win this week as uh, they got one a day or two ago, didn't they, Charlie? Got so. one uh, by forfeit, Ken. They backed up and took that uh, win away from Mate One there that they won over in that Shorty Jamerson Bowl. Right. Boy, that was some ball game. 48 43. Mate One won it. Uh, and uh, if there had been another minute on the clock, Shelby Valley would have won it anyway. Yeah. Outright. I mean, they, whoever had the ball last was going to win That's that true. one. That's true. That's true. Offensive battle, but. Uh, Chevy Valley going into that game now officially 0-4, and, and Eastridge up 12 to nothing. So a good job by the Warriors. That's true, Ken. They are now 4-0. and And I tell you what, Belford ready to kick the ball away to Pikeville here. And Harmon standing down there deep along with Sword and Honaker. Ted, Ted Honaker. Honaker. Always got to use that first name. Got these, these twins out here, Tim and Ted. They look so much alike, Ken. They do. They must be related. They must be. As Ernest boots it away, Sword's going to take it. He's at the seven-yard line. Up the left side, gets some nice blocks. He's across the 30, and him down on the corner over there, driven out of bounds at about the 33. A nice return there of 26 yards by Jacob Sword. Well, you know, we talked about both of these teams, and they both have great uh, special teams. That was a great return there. Good field position now out at the 33-yard line. Pipe will go starting good situation Ken you know if they can keep the momentum they had from that last drive even though Belfry uh, took the kickoff back for the touchdown Pike was still with a lot of momentum on that offensive unit right if they can keep it going as they break the huddle check it swords put out wide right on acre in the shotgun wing T formation Direct snap to Harmon over the right side he breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage breaks another one and gets across the 40 after the 41. Tell you what, he is a strong runner. Comes out there and got hit just past the line of scrimmage. Again, looked like he was going to go down and again breaks another tackle. Gets hit about five <laughs> yards later, breaks another. Breaks another one. Unbelievable running out here. An eight yard pickup. It's second and two. And so far, this one has been as advertised. And we expected a rivalry battle between two uh, strong football programs. And that's what we've had this evening. Yes, second and two Panthers, Honaker in the shotgun. And it's a direct snap to Ted Honaker over the left side, and he gets a yard, maybe a yard and a half. I think it's going to be a little short of the first down. Looks like it's going to be about a yard. Ken should be third down. Or let's see, will this be third down and less than a yard? Less to than go a yard. So, big play coming up here. Pikeville with the ball at their own 43-yard line, needing less than a yard. Unless Pikeville loses yards on this one again, they're going to go for it. On Acker in the shotgun. 
Ted Honeaker shifts out to the right now. And Belfry jumps offside. And I don't know, Ken. Unless Honeaker, the center moves the ball. Conacre took a step forward, so I don't know if it's going to be on, well, no, get on Belfry. I guess they're saying he took a step forward after Belfry moved. Right, as uh, who was that number 52 for Belfry? He, uh, he got, don't have much light here in the press yeah, box. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, it uh, knocked, knocked the center back off the ball there. So first Bobby and 10. Burton is number 52. Paul Aker in the shotgun. Now, Ted Honecker shifts again to the right direct snap to Daniel Harmon over the right side, and he gets across midfield down to about the 47-yard line, pickup of about five. Yeah. I think they're going to give him about five. Like you say, it'll be second down and five. Harmon uh, right now burning it up, Ken, as of that uh, last drive a while ago. He had 32 yards on uh, four carries, so we'll get some more stats here in just a minute. Let me see what we got now. Second and five as Pockwell breaks the huddle. Tim Honecker in the shotgun. Long snap count. Directly to Harmon going the left side this time. He breaks a tackle and he's down close to a first down. Probably Sucker gonna be a little short. A yard short there, Ken. So it'll be third down and about a yard to go again. So another big third down play coming up for the Panthers. Good blocking up front these last couple of plays by the Panthers. Third and a yard, long yard. This fast moving first half, we're down to 5.50 to play. Belfry on top, 14 to seven. Tim Homemaker under center this time. And he hands it off to Daniel Harmon over the right side, and he's got he's the gonna first be close, down. Ken, the have. mark comes back a little bit farther. They may have to pull the sticks out. I thought he was good. I think he got pushed back a little bit. Didn't, didn't get the forward progress. They're going to bring the chains in. It's going to be close. Yes, it is. I saw the mark. Looked like he was going to step in front of that marker, and then he came back inside, and uh, it's going to be close. That was third down, so if he didn't make it, they've got the option to go for it. Oh, on they'll fourth. go for it on fourth down here at this point on the football field, I would think. And the special chain. It's going to be close. He's got it. By, by the length of the football, maybe. Boy, really close, but it is a first and 10 point. Well, they keep the drive going. 525 to play in the half. And they're now at the Belfry 42 yard line. I'm sure Coach Jackson would like to take about uh, four or more minutes of this time yeah. and puts it, keep this drive going and put it in the end zone here and not leave Belfry a lot of time to uh, come back before halftime with a drive. But I, he, I'm sure he'd take a long run right yeah, now absolutely. somebody would break one and take give it back to him. Take six any way you can get it. <laughs> Honecker under center again. And handoff to Harmon over the right side, trying to get to the outside. He gets hit at the 40 and drives forward to about the 38-yard line. It's going to be a gain. Nice tackle there by guess who? Gerald Epping. Gerald Epping. Gain of about five on the play. It'll be second down and five now. 4.42 to play in this first half as Pike will uh, still driving the ball the way they did on that uh, drive they scored on a while ago, Ken. Yes, they are. Very effective. Actually, the offensive numbers will look a lot lopsided as Belfry got their second score on the long uh, kickoff return. Honecker lining up under center again. Belfry showing blitz. Here's the pitch to Harmon looking to go around the left side, trying to get to the outside. Great pursuit by the Pirates, and he loses five, maybe six yards. I'll tell you right now, Ken, maybe the best uh, play for Pikeville is to do the quick hitters up the middle because the pursuit of this Belfry defense tonight has been phenomenal. Absolutely. Hard to get outside on them. You, know, you can get those quick hitters up the middle and get those backs into that uh, second tier of uh, players into that linebacker core, then they got a chance to make some big plays. As he lost about six yards on the play. It's going to bring up third and 11, close to 12. 
So 335. The maybe to go to the air here. Yeah. Yeah. And three, 330 now to play here in this uh, first half of football. Swords put out wide right. Everybody else in tight. Long count. He takes it. He's back looking to pass, looking for Sower. Now he's firing it deep down the right side. Great coverage out there by Corey Chapman. Nearly picked it off. Yeah. Yeah, it was good defense on that one. Honecker kind of hung that one up in the air a little bit, too, and gave him a chance to come back and get a hand on it. So it's going to be fourth and 11 now, and Pac was going to punt it away. Good decision here with that many yards to pick up. Yeah, Clay Elliott uh, to punt it away, back deep. For Belfry is Dustin May and uh, Corey Chapman. Dangerous pair again back there. Yes, it is. 3-12 to go in the half. And it's a direct snap. Short and down the left side goes the Panthers. Inside the 20 to the 15. Number 23. 23 is John Mullen, Josh Mullen. Josh Mullins, and uh, well, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, you didn't expect that on fourth and 13, but uh, a great a great call there as it caught Belfry off guard. Boy, it sure did, and now the Belfry Pirates want a timeout. 3.02 to play in the half. It's 14 to seven, Belfry with Pikeville threatening on the Intermountain Sports Network. Welcome back to the Hamley Athletic Complex. 3.02 to play in the first half, and Pikeville, after the big fake punt, has the ball, Ken. First and 10 at the Belfry 15 yard line. Hand off to Harmon over the right side. He breaks through the line of scrimmage. Lost the ball, but I think it came loose when he hit the yeah. ground. So uh, yeah, Harmon, a nice pickup down to the 10 yard line. Five yard pickup. Ball came loose, but it was after the whistle. So he was down. So Pot, well, good position here. It'll be second and five from the Belfry 10 yard line. Is, uh, what a play there, Charlie, just before the break. That uh, fake punt. Direct snap to Josh Mullins. And he had a huge game doing that on fourth and 13. That's a gutsy call. Yeah, 5'10", 175-pound sophomore too, Ken. Oh, my. Honecker under center. High formation behind him. Here's the handoff to Ted Honecker over the left side. He gets hit immediately, but pushes forward, and the ball, ball came loose. Goes. Belfry says they have it. The officials and agree. they do. What a costly turnover. Pikeville on the verge of tying this thing up, Charlie, and they turn it back over with 2-11 to play in the half. Yeah, the Pirate fans are uh, breathing a sigh of relief over here to our right. So Belfry takes over right on the 10-yard line. They're on 10. Let's see. You think we'll see a running play or two on this, Ken? Uh, I think that's very possible. Elkins under center, wishbone formation behind him. And here's the pitch. Corey Chapman jumps a would-be tackle, breaks break, another yeah. tackle. He's across the 20, the 25, the 30, across the 40. He gets across midfield and finally driven down by Jacob Sword, Jacob I believe. Jacob Sword on the tackle. The 43-yard line, a great run by Corey Chapman. And just, just like that, the Belfry Pirates are out of the shadow of the goalpost and into Panther territory. What a run by Corey Chapman. Josh Mullins also went on the tackle there. A 48-yard run by Corey Chapman. Clock running here, a minute 45 to play in the first half. Elkins under center. Buffer still in the wishbone. Fakes the handoff to May. He's looking to pass. Throws it down the right side. And oh, what a catch. catch. Gerald Upling, a diving catch down at the 21. Beautiful play by Gerald Epling. Ball, I thought it was overthrown, Ken. I didn't think he could get to it. And then all of a sudden, he just kind of dives out there, stretches out, and pulls it in. I told you that Belfry would run the play action pass out of that wishbone before this night was over. Yeah, boy, they did very effectively. But uh, all made possible by Gerald Epling. Great diving catch as it was overthrown, but uh, oh, yeah. he, he just turned it on and, and somehow got to it. Sword was right there with him, too. First and 10 at the 21. Elkins under center. And the fumble, Pikeville picks it up, and they're going the other way. Well, that's Ted Honeaker, and he's across the 40 out to the 43. So uh, 
Well, a vengeance for Ted Honey. Yeah, he's the one yeah. fumbled it down here for the Panthers, and he recovers the Belfry fumble and has a nice return of about 25 yards. So it'll be first and 10 now for the Panthers. A minute 11 to go here in the first half at the 42-yard line. So a big turnaround of events there as Belfry looked like they were in control, Ken, moving the ball down the field, two big plays, and then the, the turnover gives it right back to the Belfry Pirates, I mean to the Pikeville Panthers. All right, first and 10, Hallnaker in the shotgun. We'll probably see the Panthers go to the air here. Don't have a lot of time to take it 58 yards. A minute 11 seconds. He's back, he's running a draw play to Harmon, breaks a tackle and makes a nice cut, gets up near midfield. Another nice run by Daniel Harmon. He's up to the 49, a seven yard pickup. Adam Bowens with a good open field tackle there, kid. And you know, you got to mention that because of the way that uh, uh, they have been breaking, that the people have been breaking tackles here tonight, Harmon right. especially. Yeah, right. You're out there one-on-one -on -one with him when you bring him down, you've, you've done something. So we're ready to go, second and three. On that ground, the shotgun, 50 seconds remaining, clock running. He throws a little pass out here in the right flat to Jacob Sword. He gets down to the 45 before being taken down. It's a first down, and clock will stop here to move the chains. Pockwell's got two timeouts remaining. They're going to mark him back at the 46, Ken. It'll be first and 10, though, for the Pikeville Panthers. Jacob Sword getting up a little slowly there. We've got an official timeout, so Pikeville with a sort of a break there you know you know you don't want to see uh, sword go out but that gives them time to set their play back set up their play late. up and uh, not not use one of those two timeouts here they can rush back to the line of scrimmage and be ready to go as soon as they're ready to resume play sword right there on his own sideline yeah it looks like he's better he's maybe a cramp there Ken. he's going to be okay looks like he's moving fine and he'll have to come out of the game for one play so that takes a big uh, one of their big receiving weapons off, off yeah. the field there. He's probably one of the oh. fastest, if not the fastest kid on the team. On Acre in the shotgun as we're back to play. Trips to the left. He takes it. He rolls to the left. Looking downfield. One of his receiver slips. Now he takes off with it and gets across the 40 to the 38-yard line. And Pop was going to have to take a timeout here and get it with 21 seconds remaining. There is a flag on the field out there too, Ken. So let's see what's going to happen there. Came in right at the That's going to cost somebody 15 yards, just on which side it's going to be on. Personal foul, Belfry. The Pirates don't have many penalties in the first half, but that one is huge. Yes, it is. I believe, Charlie, that may be their first, no, their second penalty of the night. They had the uh, offsides here earlier on yeah. the defense there on the Burton, but uh, that's 15 yards and a huge break for the Panthers. That puts it inside the 25, ball to 23 with 21 seconds to go on the half. So, yeah, the fight will burnt the timeout again. They really didn't need to, but they did. But we'll take a break and be back in 30 seconds on the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to the Hamley Athletic Complex. 21 seconds scoring here this first half, Ken. And what a half of football it's been. 14 to 7, Belfry. But the Panthers driving the ball after a couple of turnovers. Pikeville driving. Looked like they were going to score. Gave it up. Belfry took it back the other way and then gave it back. And now Pikeville back inside the 25-yard line uh, looking at the end zone after a Belfry penalty. Right. And, uh, Charlie, they're about at the point uh, time-wise, though, where the Panthers are probably going to have to throw it uh, and throw it for the end zone. Got that one timeout remaining, but only 21 seconds to go. Don Aker in the shotgun. He's rolling out to the right. And now he throws it in and out of the hands of Sword down around the 16 yard line. Incomplete stops the clock with 14 seconds to go. And probably just as well he didn't hang on to that, Charlie, because he wasn't wasn't going to get out of bounds there, and would have had to uh, they'd have had to burn that last time out had he made the catch, yeah. and uh, would have only picked up yeah, seven they, or eight yards. So with Bufunda, they want to save that timeout, Ken, because if they get in a situation with no time on the with little time on the clock, they can still kick a field goal. Right. Big play coming up here, second and ten from the Belfry 23. 14 and a half seconds remaining in the first half. Acre's going to line up in the shotgun. Harmon, the long setback. He's got trips out to the right. Here's the snap. 
Pitches it to Harmon and he gets drilled for a loss. Belfry was coming with the blitz that time, Ken. They had people coming up the middle and nowhere for Harmon to go because uh, they were really coming after Homemaker to try to put a pass rush on him that time. Yes, they were. Yes. That was number 63 on the tackle there, Charlie. Let me see if I can. Will Sutherland. Will Ken. Sutherland. Nice, Six, nice play. 6'2", 211 pound uh, junior. And, you know, Belfry in a situation here we're going to see because Pite will just burnt their last time out, Ken. So they got 7.3 seconds to go. And right now they are at a 26-yard line. Yeah, it'd be a 35-yard field goal attempt, more or less, from there if they wanted 45. to go for it. 45. Close to 45. So I look from Briggs probably to throw it for the end zone here. May not get off, may not have a chance to get off another play after this one with only 7.3 seconds to go. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what the Panthers do here. Looks like. Belfry may be going to go. No, they're not going to go into a prevent defense. They're going to still go with their regular defensive set here. Well, they're in the shotgun. 7.3 seconds to go in the half. He takes it, throws it quickly out in the right flat to Sword. He's down that sideline and knocked out of bounds at the 19 as they're trying to get into field goal range there. This uh, may give it a shot here. It'll probably be for about 36, 37 yards. Yeah, I would think you would see them try to go for it here, and they do. But Funda comes into the ball game. Looks like they're going to have to. Gonna set the tee right on the 25, so it'll be a 35-yard attempt from the right hash mark. Yeah, he backs it up about a yard. Call it about a 36-yard attempt. Mitch Jackson is the holder. There's the snap. He got it down, and it's blocked. Gerald Epling gets the block, and that's going to do it for the first half. What a half of football it was. As here at halftime, the Belfry Pirates lead it 14 to 7 over the Pikeville Panthers. We'll send it back to the station. Be back in a few minutes with halftime stats and comments right here on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to Pikeville High School. It's halftime and quite a ball game on our hands. Belfry leading Pikeville 14 to seven. And uh, Charlie, give us some numbers. Ken, let's see. First, of course, Belfry leads it 14 to seven. Pirates had six first downs, nine for the Panthers. Pike, or Belfry rushed the ball 16 times for 82 yards. Pikeville, 24 times for 136. 21 passing yards on one of two passing for the Belfry Pirates and three out of seven passing for nine yards total for the Pikeville Panthers. Total plays 18 for Belfry for 103 yards. Pikeville 31 for 145. Big plays in the ball game though were the uh, kickoff returns. Two for the Belfry Pirates for 119 yards. Of course, one of those was a uh, touchdown by Corey Chapman for 94 from 94 yards out. That's probably the difference in the ball game right now. It is. Individually, it was Daniel Harmon, 12 carries for 60 yards, a long of 23, an average of five yards. Tim Honeaker, five for 34. Zosh Mullins, one for 29. Ted Honeaker, six for 13. Corey Chapman, six for 57 for the Pirates. Dustin Mates, eight for 17 yards. Epling, one for six. And Elkins, one for two. Of course, as we said, Elkins, one of two, passing 21 yards. Uh, Tim Honeaker, three out of seven for nine yards. And the lone receptions in the ball game, Gerald Epling, one for 21 yards. That was quite a catch oh, in the first half. Catch. And Jacob Sword had two for 12. One of those uh, took him right down in the inside the one yard line, I believe, Ken. And then Daniel Harmon had one catch for minus three yards. And we're about ready for second half action. That's what a ball game it is. Do you have those uh, penalty totals there? Yeah, penalty totals. Six for 36 for the Pikeville Panthers. Belfry now three for 25. So the big 15-yarder hurting the Panther Pirates late in the first half there, Ken, as it put. Right, gave uh, Pikeville a shot to get down there close enough yep. for that uh, field goal attempt, which uh, Gerald Epling blocked it. But, uh, Pikeville will get the ball to start the second half. And they have been moving the ball well. 
Had that costly turnover inside the 10 there by Ted Honaker. And Ted came back to recover Belfry's fumble. Yeah, Pike will turn the ball over twice and lost one of those. Belfry's only fumbled it once, but Pike will did recover that one, so both teams have given it up to the other at least one time here in the ball game. <clears throat> and Philip Haywood on the kick coverage out here. Oh, yeah, he's going to leave the field now. He's standing right out there on the 35-yard line with the team. Making some last-second adjustments there, kid, not only last minute. <laughs> As Ernest kicks it away, good kick. Back at the two-yard line is Jacob Sword. He's across the 10, the 20, and taken down at the 23-yard line. And a 20, 21-yard return for Jacob Sword. Pretty good kick return coverage at, or kick coverage that time by the Belfry Pirates, Ken, as they uh, put a good wall up there and didn't let him get to the outside. Yes, they did. As the Panthers ready to go. 14 to 7, Belfry leads it. We talked about it so many times, that opening drive of the second half. You know, momentum right now resting with the Panthers, Ken, as they had some two great drives to end the half. Let's see if they can keep that up here to start this second half of play. Tim Honaker in the shotgun. Harmon to his right, Ted Honaker to his left. He takes it. Gives it off to Ted Honaker, and he's hit immediately. Tries to fight off one tackler, but then taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second and 10. Belfry made some adjustments maybe at the half. Key. Well, you know they did. Let's just see if who, which team made the right adjustments right. at the half because, you know, both coaches uh, doing a good job, I'm sure, in there drawing up uh, the plays that they want to see executed here in this second half of football. Second and 10, Panthers, as they break the huddle. Two receivers out wide to the left, one to the right. Don't make her in the shotgun. Long snap count. He takes, fakes the handoff to Harmon, fires it over the middle. It's caught. And the ball out to the 37. Ball comes loose, but he was definitely down before it came loose. So Josh Staggs on the, carry, on the reception, Ken. He is a junior, 6'1", 180 pounds. I think he's the son of Bill Staggs, isn't he? Could be. I believe so. I know Bill's at all the games. So. And uh, then the uh, senior citizen Staggs out there in, with the white hat on. Yeah, you know, it's true. You know, it, it, <laughs> <laughs> you know he may be his grandpa. <laughs> that could be. That could be. All right, first and 10, big play there for the Panthers. Picked up the first down. Honaker hands it off to Harmon over the left side, breaks a tackle, and gets across the 40 to the 41. On paper, that's going to show he got four yards, but it could have been a three-yard yeah. loss, Charlie. Could have been. You know, Belfry with good uh, penetration got in the backfield, but I tell you, he is a tough man to tackle. He sure is. Strong young man. Second and six now for Pikeville. Honecker in the shotgun. Stags and Sword split out wide to the right. He's got one receiver out to the left. It's again a long snap count. Here it is. He's back. Look at the throw again. Throws it out in the left over the head of Jacob Sword. Sword goes up, gets his hands on it, but couldn't pull it in. Just a little too high for Sword. Yeah, Epling was really ready to lower the boom on him if he caught that one, though. Yeah, so, you know, that was an it. That was. Uh, a big, this is a big third down play now coming up for the Pineville Panthers if they want to keep that momentum going that they established at the end of the second quarter. Yes, how many passes did the Panthers attempt in that first half? Uh, seven. Seven. They've already thrown two here. Two out of the last three plays have been passing plays. Third and six now. Honaker in the shotgun. He's back, rolling out to the left. Looking back, throws it back across the field through yeah, Harmon's hands. That could that, be a lateral. No, okay. no they're, they're saying it's incomplete. incomplete. It was close to being a lateral, but just a little bit forward, I imagine. So both officials right there on top of it, and they both said incomplete. So fortunate for Pike. Yeah. Fourth down now, so it looks like uh, Pike will, will have to punt the football away. And Clay Elliott, uh, warming up a while ago, was getting some boomers away, Ken. He has got a really good leg. 
9.48 to play in the third quarter. Chapman and May back deep for the Belfry Pirates. Elliott kicks it away. Great kick. Beautiful high spiral. Hits it to 20. Takes a roll inside the five. And Can't do gets it. into the end zone. Yep. Had a shot to down it at the one there, but couldn't quite get to it quick enough. I think he slid all the way into the end zone with the football, and if your body touches the end zone, I don't think you can down it, can you? I think your body's in the end zone and you're touching it. It's a touchback. That was, uh, I think that was 32. Yes, I don't have a, we don't have a 32. Sean Hubs. No, wrong, wrong side, here. wrong roster. Yeah. Don't have one on there. So. Don't have one, you're right. But a great effort by number 32. And so Belfry's first possession of the second half. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 20. Elkins under center, Andrew Elkins, the sophomore quarterback. Hands it off to Dustin May. He breaks it up the middle across the 30 and tackled out at the 40-yard line by Jacob Sword, or he might have gone. Yeah, Jacob probably saved a touchdown right there, Ken, as May was off to the races. He sure was a 20-yard pickup. Great block on the right side of that line. Freed him up, and he was gone. 20-yard pickup. Now, Belfry coming out with that uh, split, or kind of, I call it an inverted wishbone, because they kind of run two slots out of it. And it's May again over the right side, running over people. Gets up to the 47-yard line, close to the 48. Pick up of eight, looks like it'll be second down and two. Nine minutes now to go in the third quarter. And Belfry comes up looking fresh here in the second half, Ken. Yes, they do. Elkins off the sideline with the play. Well, she didn't really hear a whole lot about Dustin May in the first half. He's uh, making it known quickly in the second half. Sure is. And May gets it again up the middle, and not much there this time. He got maybe half a yard before being driven back. Yeah, it'll be second or third down and two now coming up again for the Belfry Pirates. Big play coming up here. Clock running, 8-16 to play in the third quarter. Belfry leading Pikeville 14-7. Elkins under center, wishbone formation this time. And here's the pitch back to Corey Chapman over the right side, some room, and he's across midfield down to the Pikeville 41 yard line. I thought we were going to have an offside. Looked like Pikeville jumped offside, no flag, but uh, of course I'm sure uh, Belfry would have declined it had they thrown it anyway. Yeah, absolutely, picked up about 11 yards on the carry to Chapman, so it's first and 10 now in Pikeville territory for the Belfry Pirates. And I'll tell you, Charlie Pottwell certainly doesn't want to give up another touchdown here, get down two touchdowns in this, this ball game. You know, that's one of the things we talk about early, Ken. Yep, that should be legal procedure. Yeah, no, it'll be. Was that was moving, yes. Yeah. Or Belfry uh, jumped offside, or jumped with a false start there. And But with something we talked about earlier before, before we started the ball game. Belfry, a team that likes to really wear you down on the front with their numbers and their size. And you may see, may have seen some of that in the first half. Pipe will maybe a little more tired than Belfry. Belfry, all, Belfry does look awful sharp this third well, quarter. You know, Pipe will plays a lot of their big linemen both ways. Belfry doesn't do a lot of that with the linemen all the time. As Andrew Elkins under center. And here's a handoff to Ampling, and oh, is he grabbed by the face mask? That's going to be the 15-yarder, yep. too. Ampling shaking up there. Yep. It's, uh, I believe that was number 10, Chaz Jackson, that got him, I think. So I'll tell you, you know, that's a, that's a tough one there. Uh, Pipe with a real good job defensively, Ken. And again, the penalty the penalties have hurt both teams at key times here in this uh, football game. Belfry, uh, or Belfry able to capitalize on theirs earlier when uh, Pipe had these penalties. Pipe will not able to capitalize on the big penalty Belfry ended up with right, at the end of the first half. Re one reason being it was so late in the half, they ran out of time there before uh, having a chance to capitalize. 
Right, we've really had some costly ones tonight. Here we go. Elkins under center. It's first down and six after the penalty. And off to Dustin May over the left side. He's still on his feet. Gets down close to the first down. Going to be about a yard, a little less than a yard short. And the scoreboard takes a nap. Just one out. It does that occasionally. You've got this wireless uh, scoreboard clock here. And they've yeah. got it back on again. Back on now with 6.52 to play in the third. It actually doesn't lose any time, Ken. It just uh, that, that uh, signal goes out every now and then. Second down and one now for the Pirates. Official timeout here. We've got an equipment problem over here with Daniel Harmon, something with his face mask. And, I, you know, and you look out there in that secondary of Pikeville, you've got all of their starters on their offensive unit out there playing both ways. They've got to play all night long. Right. Elkins under center, wishbone formation behind him, second and one. Here's the pitch back to Chapman. Or that's Epling over the left side, a big hole, and he gets down across the 25 to the 23, and here comes a late flag in. I believe that's going to be on Pike, well, Ken. And Coach Jackson getting all over Tim Honaker. Evidently, the penalty must have been on Tim. Personal foul. It is another huge mistake by the Panthers. Yep. We're at the 23. That should take it half the distance to the goal. And the we have another. Okay. I thought he was going to make another call there for a minute. Better having that discussion. Call. Ball at the 12 yard line. First and 10, Belfry. So. Pike will just really, Pike will shot herself in the foot a lot on penalties in this football game. They sure have. Elkins takes the snap, gives it off to Dustin May up the middle. He gets across the 10, down to near the eight yard line, pick up of about four on the carry. The second and six. Like I said, Charlie, if, uh, if Belfry can go up two touchdowns here and uh, with Pike, we're having to play most of these players on both sides of the ball. It's, it's going to be tough to come back. Yeah, so it is. It's going to be even more tired in the fourth quarter. Elkins takes it, pitches it back to Chapman. Chapman over the right side, and he gets drilled. Picked up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Down at the seven. It'll be third down and about six. Maybe five, yeah, closer to third and five. So a huge play coming up here. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you know Belfry right now in this situation, they're trying to go. They'll try to go for that knockout punch, and even if they don't get the first down here, they will probably go for it on fourth down instead of kicking the field goal. You know, because two touchdowns would be huge right now in this ball game. Yes, it would, because they've got a got a very good kicker. And now Belfry takes a timeout here. 4.04 to play in the third. It's 14 to 7. Belfry over Pikeville. We're back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. Welcome back to the Hamley Athletic Complex. 14 to 7. Belfry and the Pirates threatening again, Ken, with 5.04 to go here in the third quarter. And this third quarter has been all Pirates. Yes, it has. And this is a huge play coming up here, Charlie. Third and five from the Pikeville seven yard line for the Belfry Pirates. Elkins under center. He pitches it back to Epling over the left side, and he gets drilled. Probably lost a yard. Tim Honeaker, the big tackle. Back at the eight. So it'll be fourth and six now, and here comes the field goal unit on, Charlie. It's, uh, Coach Haywood, I'm thinking, you know, want to go up by more than a score here. Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, Glenn Ernest, the kicker, he's got a good leg, so. Like they're going to spot it right at the 15. It'll be a 25 yard attempt. We saw him kick an extra point from this distance there in the first half. Here it's down. The kick is up. And it looks good. It is. Straight through the uprights by Glenn Ernest. And it's 17 to 7 now. Belfry up by 10. The biggest lead of the night. It is. You know, the Pirates. Uh, 
drove the ball pretty well that time, Ken. A couple of penalties by Pike will put them in great field position, but they couldn't uh, get it into the end zone. So that gives that uh, Belfry or that Pike will defense something to uh, hang their hat on for a while. Right, they got to got to feel pretty fortunate to come out of this with uh, only giving up three points, especially after that uh, huge penalty there on the late hit. And and Belfry will kick it back to the Panthers, and the Panthers. Um, Really important drive for them here, Charlie. Down to 4.18 yep. to go here in the third, and they need to get something going here. They need to at least have a good drive, if not put points on the board, but they really need points right now in this football game. As, uh, like as you talk, that Belfry offense, when they get the ball, you don't know when you're going to get it back. They That's that true. great ground game, and they keep that clock running, so not, not yep. that many I'm opportunities sure we'll, left. We'll get some uh, stats on that last drive here in a minute. We'll tell you how long it took them. But that was a quite a long drive. There was only two drives so far in this uh, quarter, and there's only 4.18 left. Well, I tell you, Rick Bentley right on top of those tests tonight, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's done a great job. Ernest to kick it. Boots it away. A shorter kick this time as Ted Honecker drops it at the 17. Boots it, having all kinds of trouble, and Pockmore falls on it. I believe that was number 57 of the Panthers, Charlie. 57 for Pike was well, J.D. McCoy, a 5'11", 205-pound uh, junior. Came up with it there. Ball out at the 28-yard line. Pretty good return there. Ted dropped it. Yeah, he was. It, yeah. It, picked up about 13 I yards. I thought he was playing rugby there for a minute. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the real football, as they say. Oh, Sox. yeah, yeah. Or they say down under that Aussie rules football. <laughs> First and 10 pipe from their own 28. Tim Honecker in the shotgun. As Harmon splits out a little bit to the left, direct snap to Ted Honecker. He's got a great block and he's gone. He's across the 50, the 40. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. The 20, the 10. Touchdown, Pikeville. 72 yards for Ted Honecker. And we've got a ball game on our hands. We do, kid. You know, you, know, you expect those big plays out of great players, and Honecker with a lot of speed. And he just made a beautiful move up the middle to pick up a huge score. We just said how important this score was to the Pikeville Panthers, and they're right back into this ball game now, 17 and when we're yet to see the extra point at him. Big, big play there for the Panthers. And boy, I tell you what, uh, most of the big runs tonight, the Pike, Pike has been breaking a lot of tackles. He didn't have to on that one. He got some great blocks up there, Charlie. The Funder ready to kick it. Mitch Jackson puts it down, the kick up, and it's good. As your score now, 7 to 14. Belfry leading it with 4.01 to play in the third quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds on the Intermountain Sports Network. Job that time covering that football up after he got his hands on it and just to the, just a step or two away from a big run there. Yes, he was. They spotted at the 29, first and 10, Belfry. 3.56 to play in the third quarter. Belfry clinging to a three point lead, 17 to 4. So the Belfry Pirates uh, going to try to get that offense uncorked here, Ken, get, get something going. They're going back straight to the wishbone again. Elkins under center. Hand off to Chapman. He gets hit in the backfield, breaks the tackle, and gets up to the 30. Only a one-yard So second down and nine now coming up for the Belfry Pirates. And this Pikeville team really fired up now, Ken. That uh, size and strength advantage may not be so big. We've got the uh, adrenaline and now the Pikeville Panthers. Right. They're almost as fired up as these Pikeville fans. Yeah. They're really fired up over here. Chris Gibson there uh, stuffed that play. He didn't make the tackle, but he's uh, pushed the offensive lineman back into Chapman there and slowed up the play. Good job. Quick hitter up the middle, and it's fumble. That's, and it's still rolling around. I think we'll have it. They did. And 10 back to the Pikeville Panthers at the 44-yard line play right there by the Panthers to pick up that loose football. That was Dodson, Charlie. One of the areas two times he's touched the ball tonight, and he coughed it up. 
They're going to actually mark it right at the 45. It'll be first and 10 now for the Pikeville Panthers. 3.09 to go in the third quarter of play. 17-14 in the Panthers with all the momentum on their back right now. Yes, they have. As they break the huddle, on that shotgun, he's got Ted Honaker to his right, Daniel Harmon to his left, and either one of the three could return. And it's a direct snap to Daniel Harmon. Run a great run down inside the 30 and a six yard pickup. Yeah, but uh, he is tough man to bring down. I'm sure some college is probably taking a look at him. Still got uh, years of high school left to play, yep. Charlie. Very talented young man. Quite a basketball player too. And Pike will second and four. And I turn the shotgun. Formation. And I turn the shotgun. To the right, and here comes the flag. Probably delay a game. Came from the back, Judge. Yes, uh, has done all night. They hurt themselves again with a penalty. Yeah, yeah, that's all, true. All this momentum, a second and four, and then you back it up five yards. Yeah, that's true. You know, the penalties are a huge part of this football game. Second and nine now. Honecker in the shotgun. Ted Honecker to his right, Harmon to his left. Now Harmon eases to left. Direct snap to Ted Honecker on the left side. He breaks the tackle, gets on down near the 35. A nice run, close to the first down. Gonna be about They're a half a yard yeah. short, it looks like. Gonna mark him a little closer to the 34 yard line, or to the 36 yard line. I'll tell you one, one thing, Charlie, that makes them successful on those uh, direct snaps is uh, either Harmon or, or uh, Honaker, whoever uh, takes it. The other one is a, a tremendous blocker, lead, lead, yeah. leading the blocking you're, there. You're exactly right. So it's third and one, eye formation this time. And off to Daniel Harmon over the right side. He's got it. He's across the 35, down to the 33, three yard pickup. So it's first and 10 pot. Yeah, he made that a convincing first down there, Ken. Is, yeah, that's one thing you, with Harmon. He has got such explosion coming up the middle. Once he gets to that line of scrimmage, he's got a lot of momentum behind him. He's going to carry himself ahead for a yard or so. Right. And this third quarter winding down in a hurry. We're down to a minute 24 to play. Well, a nice drive here. We're down at the 33 of Bell for the first and 10. On Acre in the shotgun. Direct snap to Harmon around the right side. And here he goes across the 25, breaks the tackle, spins, and gets inside the 15. What a run by Daniel Harmon. He's near the 10. Another great run by the sophomore. They spot it back at the 12, so he picked up about 21 yards on that carry, Charlie. I'll tell you what, he has been the man so far for the Pikeville Panthers here tonight, Ken, as he has put uh, Put a lot of yards in their basket. He sure has. First and 10, just inside the 13. Bachmann threatening to take the lead here. On Acre in the shotgun, 40 seconds to go in the third quarter. Direct snap again to Harmon over the right side. He gets hit immediately and still gets inside the 10, down to the nine, almost four yards on that carry. May not have another play in this quarter. Yeah, now set the play I'm clock. wondering Pop if the don't coaching have to staff. Run one. And looks don't look like they're going to, Ken. They're looks like they're going to gonna let time run out. So 17-14 will be your score at the end of three. We'll be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to the Emily Athletic Complex. We're ready to start the fourth quarter of play, Ken. And what a ball game it's been. 17-14. Right now, Belfry leading it, and Daniel Harmon, we've talked about him all night, 17 carries for 97 yards. He'll be up close to 100. Well, he'll have 100 before <laughs> this one's over. Uh, he averaged 5.7 yards a carry, and I'll tell you what, Ted Honaker right now about to bust the 100-yard mark, nine carries 
for 93 yards. And right now, Pike will owns the statistics, Ken. Total offense, 30 plays for Belfry, 170 yards. 42 for Pike, well, 276. Yeah, as we're ready to get back to play, it'll be second and six for the Panthers inside the Belfry 10-yard line. Yes, on that, in the shotgun. Wing T formation. Direct snap to Ted Honecker this time around the right side. He gets hit and can't quite turn the corner there, driven out of bounds. Where they're going to spot it. Just down to about the eight. Just got about a yard on that one, it looked like. Good pursuit there by the Belfry defense. So it's going to leave third and six now. Third and five. Just underway here in the fourth quarter. Michael trailing Belfry 17 to 14, but they're threatening inside the 10. The ball at the eight yard line. Lawmakers gonna line up under center this time. I formation behind him. And hand off to Ted Honecker, second man through. He gets down to about the six, and that's about it. He got drilled right there. And uh, what will Pike do here, Charlie? Big call right now for the Bible Panthers. Are you in home? You're at home. You play for the you play for the tie, or you play for the win? Play for the win, I imagine. Going to. He's going to go for it. He's not even thinking about putting that field right. goal team in. Well, they tried that field goal right before halftime and got it blocked, so that probably plays into his thinking here too. Maybe so. Big play. It's fourth down and about three. On Acre in the shotgun. Wing T formation. Sword the lone wide out, split out wide left. Long snap can. They're trying to draw them off sides, and now Pikeville takes a timeout. Maybe they're going to bring the field goal unit on now, Ken. I don't know. Yes, evidently we're just trying to draw Belfry offside. Coach Jackson looking down at the official there. But uh, we'll just keep it right here, Charlie. 11.04 <laughs> to play in the game, and it's 17-14 Belfry. So Coach Jackson's got a big decision to make here. Yeah, and you, know, you don't see the... Uh, You'll see the kicking team making a move to come onto the field now, and I don't wonder if he's going to go for it on fourth and three here. It's a big call. Yes. You know, conventional wisdom, I think, is you play for the tie at home, the win on the road, isn't it? Right. Unless your last kick got blocked. Well, that's you might, true. Well, that you might true. say, let's, let's go ahead and, and try it. So, uh, but evidently, they are going for it. I didn't, didn't see any yep. movement there. Funda, I think, still on the sideline here. Quite a ball game. Be sure and tune in uh, tomorrow, too, for our second game this week as uh, Eastridge hosting Shelby Valley. We got an early score in that game. Eastridge was up 12 to nothing. Haven't heard anything since. So. No, we'll see if we can get an update here in a minute. Uh, it'll be, it, you know, that'd be, that would be a huge win right there for Eric. Uh, Rattle up in his Warriors, though. Yes, it would. And here we go. Pike was going for it. Fourth and three. Honaker under center. Eye formation behind him with Ted Honaker, the deep back. Here's the pitch back to Honaker. Around the left side, and he's not going to get it. Taken down at the five. And who's that down right there, Charlie, for Belfry? Made a great play. That's Epling. That's Epling. Who else? Who else? He's... We, he called his name a bunch this season so far for the Belfry Pirates. And a huge play there. So Belfry will take over first and 10 at their own five yard line. And that's a huge defensive play right there for the Belfry Pirates, Ken. It Turn sure it away, is. this uh, Pikeville offense. Big play. That's the big, uh, big thing here. Pockwell does have him pinned back if they can uh, can hold him here. Get the ball back. Should get good field position. Here's hand off up the middle. Dustin May running hard. He gets up near the 10. Pockwell going to spot him just short of the 10-yard line. Be a pickup of about uh, five. It'll be second down and five. So Belfry right now, Ken, I think won't just buckle it up, and you're going to see the, the big hitters carrying the ball now. I think so. Try to, five. try to chew up a lot of time off this clock, too. I think their last drive took over five minutes off the clock. Elkins under center. And 
hand off once again to May up the middle, and the ball's loose, picked up by Pikeville. The Panthers recover, a huge turnover by Dustin May. I'm telling you what, man, Belfry's shooting. You know, we talk about penalties. Belfry's turned the ball over a couple of times in some bad territory. They sure have. That was Chaz Jackson on the fumble recovery. Big, big turnover there. Pockwell with another chance here to take the lead. They got it first and 10 at the Belfry 13 yard line. What a break for the Panthers. Onaker in the shotgun. The direct snap to Harmon over the right side and a great run. Gets inside the five to the four. This kid is one talented back. He is Ken, you know, a lot of future for him here at this uh, with the Pikeville Panthers. That's uh, near right at eight yards. Second and two now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Charlie, he's doing this too. He's one of the top defenses, top defenses in, the state. in the state. You're exactly right. Second and two now. Here's another direct snap to Harmon around the right side. He breaks a tackle, breaks a couple, and I think he may be in. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Pikeville. Daniel Harmon takes it in from four yards out. And Pikeville has their first lead of the night, Charlie. Yeah, I'll tell you what, 23, well, 20 to 17 now. So a huge uh, play right now for the Pikeville Panthers, Ken. This could make it a, it could take away that uh, field goal right now if they put this one through the uprights to make it a four point ball game. So this is a big extra point coming up here. Harmon coming in late. The funds are ready to kick it. It's down, the kick up, and hits the goal post. No good. Bounces back. back. No yep. good. It's uh, nearly blocked there by guess who, Charlie? Huh, Gerald Epplin. Gerald Epplin got in there, and he may have even touched it. He was very close to getting in there and getting it. So, uh, But the Panthers do have the lead, 20-17, to 17, with 9-12 to go in the ball game. Yes, what a ball game this has been. It has been, Ken. You know, I don't know. More, maybe more than advertised here. We knew it was going to be a good football game, but it's been a great one so far. It sure has. In this game. What are you doing tomorrow afternoon, Charlie? Ken, I believe I may come over here and watch a football game. Uh, the Pikeville College Bears will take on the Campbellsville Tiger in their first uh, Mid-South Conference game of the season, and a big game for both of those teams as they come in officially 0-2 on the season. Right, right. It is a big game. And tomorrow's when they really start counting, though, when you get into those conference yep. games. The Bears, a very young team, but uh, they've got some talent. They do, Ken. And I tell you what, just some uh, great play right now by the Pikeville Panthers over here in the second half is uh, they have really been uh, playing well against this uh, Belfry defense. 110 yards on 19 carries for Daniel Harmon in this football game tonight. Another great game for the sophomore. As Max Pafunda gets ready to kick it away. And these Bachman fans are fired up. Back deep is Gerald Epling and Corey Chapman. And it's a short kick. Taking it at the 22 is Belfry and up across the 30 to about the 32 and that's it. Was uh, number 11. So Belfry first and 10 at their own 32 after the 10 yard return by Devin Cohare. Big drive coming up here for the Pirates. They need to get things going back in their direction as the Pikeville's had all the momentum since about uh, halfway through that third quarter. Oh, you're exactly right. I mean, it's a uh, this is a huge drive for Belfry. And here he goes off the left side. Corey Chapman, a big gain up to the 41 yard line. Nice run by Chapman as he got some good block, good lead blockers out Epling right out in front of him, giving him some nice uh, support. 
And eight yard pickup for Corey Chapman. Gerald Epling might be the best football player in the state, Charlie, pound for pound. He's, very he's, a, he's a small kid, only 145 pounds, and he does so much for this team. Elkins hands it off to Dustin May. He's got the first down and more across the 45 and taken down just across midfield there as Jacob Sword, a big tackle there, or May could have gone for a lot more yardage. May and the Sword uh, talking to each other there. With a finger pointing. And I tell you what, Ken, uh, it's uh, right now Belfry moving the ball pretty good. And, you know, this is a huge drive, like I said, for them. They need. In the minds of these Pirates, they need to get back on that scoreboard and retake that lead. Yes, they do. Just across midfield, just short of the 49. Elkins takes it, hands off left side to Chapman. And Chapman down to the 45, another nice run. That's a pretty good runner right yards. there because he carried the uh, Pikeville Panthers for about three yards. There are a host of them. Absolutely. Seen some great effort out here tonight by these young men on both sides. You know, 7.50 to play now in this uh, football game. 20 to 17, the Panthers on top of the Pirates. Elkins under center. Straight up the middle to May. Big hole, and he's down to the 35-yard line, and he had about eight yards before he got touched, Charlie. Great blocking on the left side of that line. Yeah, I tell you, you know, May was just a bruising runner up through there. And again, that uh, Belfry... Offensive and defensive substitution, I think, may become maybe start to become a factor here in this fourth quarter, because we've got a injured uh, Panther coming out of the ball game out there. It's uh, Casey Rowe, a 5'10", 240-pound senior lineman uh, that uh, looks like they're going to take a break. So, seems that his legs about to give out well, on him there. Yeah, I guess they don't have to. Guess they're not. That's not. He's staying out there. Casey, a tough young man. Like I said earlier, before the game, he's the state champion in weightlifting in his division. Quite a football player, this Casey Rowe. Here's the pitch back to Chapman. A nice hole over the That's right side. Trouble. He breaks it to the outside and wrapped up by Ted Honeaker. Then Tim Honeaker comes in and helps finish him off, but he all the way down at the 21-yard line, a 13-yard pickup. Yeah, Jacob Sword out there suffering some cramps there, Ken, at about the 29-yard line. And here comes the trainer off the sideline for the Pikeville Panthers. We've got 7.05 to play in the third quarter, or in the ball game, excuse me. Yeah. Pikeville leads it 20 to 17. And so we're still down out there. We'll send it back to the station and be back in just a minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. Back to play, first and 10, Belfry from the Pikeville 21-yard line. Hand off straight up the middle, Dustin May. He gets a nice gain over the right side of about four, almost five yards. I tell you, you know, Belfry really uh, working hard on the blocking up front, Ken, their offensive line opening some holes up to give them some nice, uh, good, nice holes in there. Yes. Second down and six now for Belfry. And we've got movement. Flag on the play, and Belfry says it's going against Pikeville. It is another offside penalty on the Pikeville Panthers. And that's going to put Belfry close to that first down, ball down to the 12-yard line. It'll be second and one now. Elkins under center. Second and one. Hand off Chapman. Big hole over the left side. He waltzes into the end zone. Great blocking on the left side of that line, and it's an easy touchdown for Corey Chapman. You know, that's one of the things, again, you know, you see in Bill Pikeville right now coming up those cramps down the stretch, Ken, and, and that may be uh, not conditioning, just that they're on the field all night and Belfry's not. Right, uh, mo most of these uh, young men out here for the Panthers, like I said, Charlie, playing both sides of the ball and special teams. Jacob yeah. Swords out there on all the kickoffs, and punt returns, and all those things. Here's the kick up by Ernest. It's good. 5.58 to go in the ball game. Belfry back on top, 
24 to 20. We'll be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. Five fifty-eight to play here in the football game. It's now 24-20. The Belfry Pirates on a great drive, Ken. That time the Pirates took it. Uh, it was Corey Chapman on a 12-yard run to take it in. The drive lasted 3:08, went seven plays for 67 yards. Nice drive by the Pirates to retake the lead. Corey Chapman has joined the 100-yard club, Ken. He has 13 carries for 100 and 108 yards and one touchdown. Daniel Harmon, the leading rusher in the ballgame, 19 carries for 110 yards and one touchdown. So two, two men going at it with similar numbers now. As Glenn Ernest prepares to kick it away, back deep for Pikeville. Daniel Harmon, Ted Honeaker, and who we got over here? It's cause, is that Sword? Yep, right Sword back there deep. No, it's, no not. it's not. That's not sword. In there now is Houston McAnallen. Now McAnallen moves to the center of the field. Here's a kick. Straight away. Good kick. Inside the five. Ted Honaker picks it up at the one. Here he comes. Turns on the speed. Trying to get outside. Great tackle out there by the Pirates. 23 and is that 16 or 18, Ken? Uh, that's number well, eight. Maybe, number eight, okay. Number eight there. Who's that down there? Will? Number eight is Philip Hickman. Good job out there, Honaker, with that great speed, but they were able to get to him and take him down at the 16 yard line. You know what you know what on the gate speed on a football field is getting that right angle, right getting a good angle, angle on him and making the tackle. That's what they did. They came at him from an angle. 552 to play in the game. Belfry leads it 24-20. Pike was 84 yards away from the end zone as they start this drive. Tim Honaker in the shotgun. And it's a direct snap to Harmon. Cuts it back up the middle and still on his feet. He will not go down. What a run by Daniel Harmon up to the 31. He picks up 15 yards and, and about, about 10 of it yeah, on his own. On his own, every He's bit of it. Carrying people. Phenomenal run. Every bit of it is. He, well, he, they had him and they had him wrapped up around the waist, kid. He just pulled completely free of the. Of the Defend, defender and when he got another four or five yards after that. Man. And we know these Belfry Pirates can tackle. Oh, yeah. yeah so <laughs> when you saw him do these, these kind of things against Lexington Henry Clay, you, you know this is one special back. Here he goes up the middle and nothing there this time for Harmon. Good job by the Pirates. They drilled him right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. So it'll be second down and 10 now coming up for the Pikeville Panthers 24-20, your score five minutes now left in the ball game, so time starting to become an enemy now. It's a big enemy of the Panthers here. This this may be the last time they touch the ball, so they, this, uh, they, they could uh, have to take it down the field this time. Allnaker in the shotgun. It's a direct snap to Harmon again, and he gets nailed again right at the line of scrimmage. Dustin May in on the hit, and May really drilled him. So no Bel gain again for Harmon. Belfry really keying on Harmon right now, Ken. Making it tough on him. As yes. Pikeville fans a little tense now, Charlie. Yeah. Time running out. They trail it by four. I tell you what, uh, tough ball game for either one of these teams to lose. Is this is this is some great competition right oh, here. Oh, it certainly is. Third and ten. On Acre in the shotgun. Belfry showing blitz. Here's a snap. He puts it right hole, and he got grabbed by the face mask. On that bit, he's taken down for a big loss, but uh, that's five. Or, it's going to be a matter on what the judgment on this one is, whether it's a five or a 15, Ken. I they, think it'll be 15. He jerked, jerked his head around yeah. pretty good there. They let go, but uh, it, it was a pretty that's good grab That's an automatic the face first mask. down, too. Yes, so. it is. So that was huge right again. What makes turns the ball game around right now is a penalty. A penalty. It'll be an automatic first down if it's the personal foul version. They're saying third down. No, I guess not. The ball up to the 38 yard line. It's going to be third down and three. Huge play coming up here. As. Bunch up tied in that wing T position. 
Foremost. Nine men in the box for Belfry. And one of the linemen, Harmon was shifting to the left. One of the linemen, offensive linemen, just took off. Yep. So that's a five-yarder against Pockville. Very costly. And what did we, what did we just said on that last penalty? Penalties are huge in this ball game. Well, they have been. Both teams. Ball back now at the 34-yard line. Now Indeed. makes it third and eight. 3.37 now left in the football game, Ken. Five more. Two, they've got two more two downs to get it. They'll have to go for it here. Oh, you got this, to. This time running out here quickly. Third down and about seven on the call. Don Aker back. He's going to get Oh, he the lost the football. And Pikeville had the position to fall on it. Whether they did or not, I'm not sure. They did. I believe they did, but the ball. All the way back at the 25, and you can see that coming. Honey, yeah. blindsided from the backside. And they're going to punt it away, evidently. You just about have to here, Ken. It's fourth down and uh, 15 or six, yeah. 16. Yeah. And if you give the ball up here, you give it to that Belfry offense at the 26 yard line, you've got to get it back out of there. So, Pike was going to punt it away. They've got two timeouts left, and uh, they're Belfry just about going to need yeah. to get a three and out to have a chance to yeah. get this thing back. Belfry gets one first down. It's 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 in doubt. If they get two, it's over. And now we've got a clock stoppage. And Pikeville forced to use one of those final two timeouts. They'll just have one remaining. 2.38 to play in the ball game. It's 24-20. Belfry will be back in one minute on the Intermountain Sports Network. We're back to play as Pikeville in punt formation. Elliott awaits the snap. He gets it. Kicks it away, a good high kick. It takes a bounce for Belfry down at the 45-yard line. McAnally. Tim McAnally downs it. Going to put it right at the 46. Belfry at their own 46 will take over first and 10 with two and a half minutes left in the game. And Pike was uh, pretty well. Got to hold Belfry to a three and out here, Charlie, with only one timeout remaining. Yeah, you know, Belfry, if Belfry holds on to the football here, Ken, it, it, it spells a lot of trouble for the Pineville Panthers because a couple of first downs, and this one is on ice for the Pirates now. But what a ball game it's been. Oh, it has. Great ball game. Elkins under center, pitches it back to Chapman over the right side. He gets a nice hole and still on his feet. Good hard running by Corey Chapman. Gets into Pineville territory at the 48. Picked up about seven yards on the play. Yeah, that, that's, that's a bad first down start for the Panthers here, though, because, you know, now it's a Six short, yeah, short second down coming up for the Belfry Pirates. That clock winding down as we hit the two-minute mark to go in the ballgame. Yeah, if they get this first down, Ken, this ballgame may be over. Right. Second and four. Wishbone formation behind Elkins. And off to Dustin May up the middle, and he's got uh, close to the first down, probably about a half a yard short, just across the 45. Maybe a foot short, Ken, I'm not sure. Yes. Third down and less than a yard. Elkins under center. Hands it off to May over the right side. He's got the first down, down to the 43, close to the 42, and uh, that's probably going to do it. As Pogba with only one timeout remaining. 102 to go in the ball game. Well, Belfry can basically just take a knee here about three times, Charlie. And Put this one away. Elkins under center. And they're in position to just take a knee. Elkins backs up, takes the knee, and clock down to 34. Pockville takes the time out here, but uh, it's a little too, little too late as 
Like Belfry's going to come away with a hard-fought win here, Charlie. I think so, Ken, and I tell you what, just a great football game by both of these teams, and some young men have put some uh, great numbers up on the board. You know, Corey Chapman and uh, Daniel Harmon have both had a great night. Ted Honeaker, uh, Dustin May, you know, it's just a textbook on how to run the football tonight by both teams. Boy, it has been. been a great ball game here, very entertaining. And Great atmosphere. Both these schools with tremendous fan support. Huge, huge crowd here. Charlie, this looks almost like the uh, Pike County Bowl here with this crowd. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, just a tremendous crowd. And they've got their money's worth tonight, that's for sure. Yes, sir, they have. You know, both of these teams, of course, have always come to play football, and they've always drawn big crowds. And tonight, no exception. 33 seconds to go as we're ready to get back to play. It's second and 12 for Belfry. All they have to do is take a knee. Pop will out of timeouts. Elkins takes the knee back at the 47 and it's going to do it there. They don't, want to, don't have to run another play. So congratulations to Coach Philip Haywood and the Belfry Pirates as they come away with a hard-fought victory here, 24 to 20 over Pike Boy. And uh, both these, uh, all these fans can be proud of their team, Charlie. Whether yeah, both teams. A Panther fan or a Belfry fan, they, they both played their hearts out here tonight. Both teams showed a lot of uh, class and effort here, Ken. As the team meet in the middle of the field now, coaches. So, Belfry so. wins it 24-20. We are, uh, have our final stats here in just a, just a couple of minutes. We'll send it back to the station and be back with a wrap-up of this game right here on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports on both sides. And, uh, Charlie, you got some numbers for us? Well, let's see. We'll I don't think they passed him down all the way down here yet, Ken. They're, he's working on. Are we still there? We're still on the TV, Ken. I don't know if we're still on the radio or not. And we're waiting on them to past the uh, stats down here. Give us a chance to look at them here in a second. But 24-20, uh, to 20, a big win by the Belfry Pirates. Had a little technical difficulty there. Had somebody knocked an electrical plug out of the wall on us. So we're going to try to get everything together and wrap this one up for you here in just a few moments as a, a great football game here. You know, Belfry came out uh, with a couple of good drives, moving things down the field. Looked like they may be going to pull away from uh, Pipel in the early going and then the Panthers with some big plays of their own got themselves right back on. So we're we're everything back in order here again. We're ready to still stay on the air. We're not sure we had a power uh, surge there and things went off for a minute. So what, what a ball game it was there, Charlie, as uh, Belfry hangs on for a 24-20 win. It's uh, just a great, great night of football here. Nothing like high school football on a Friday night in yeah. Kentucky. And uh, this this a tremendous atmosphere, tremendous ball game. Two really, really good football teams. Pockwell in class single-A, Belfry in two-A. And watch out for both of these teams when playoff yeah, time comes. Yeah, come playoff so, time. I think both of them will be right back here in this one. There's uh, quite a uh, football game here. I think both of them will be playing well up into the uh, uh, holiday season, I guess you would say, Ken as it will go all the way down to, you know, could all the way go down to playing on thank, you know, Thanksgiving time, you know, for both one of these, one or both Never of these know. teams. So, you know, waiting on them to pass me down there. We go, there's some numbers we've got for you, Ken. Uh, give you a quick rundown of the ball game. 24-20, of course, your score, 16 first downs for the Pirates, 15 for the Panthers. Rushing yards, uh, pretty close, Ken. 42 carries for Belfry, 226 yards. 42 carries for Pikeville, 270 yards. So 21 uh, yards passing for the Pirates on one of two. Four out of 10 passing for 23 yards for the Panthers of Pikeville. So our total offensive numbers, uh, 44 plays, 247 yards for the Pirates. 52 plays, 293 yards total offense for the Pikeville Panthers. Now, 
Kickoff returns big part of the ball game. Four for 138 yards for Belfry, five for 83 for Pikeville. So both teams with some good special teams play there. Penalties, six for 60 for the Pike for the Belfry Pirates, 11 for 77 yards for the Pikeville Panthers. Time of possession, 21 minutes, 55 seconds for Belfry. Pikeville, 26 minutes and five seconds. So a lot of plays here. Four, fourth, third down conversions, four out of seven for Belfry, three out of 10 for Pikeville. And fourth down conversion, Belfry goes for it once and don't get it. Belfry, Pikeville does it two out of three times. So pretty good uh, fourth down conversions. And here's a new one, red zone scores and chances. Three times, whereas Belfry in the red zone, three times the Pirates scored. Pikeville got into the red zone four times. Ken only managed to come away with one score. So big part of the ball game. Uh, individually, Daniel Harmon, 22 carries, 125 yards and one touchdown. Ted Honaker, 12 carries, 97 yards and a touchdown. Josh Mullins, one carry, 29 yards. And Tim Honaker, seven carries for 19 yards and one touchdown for the Pikeville Panthers. Belfry's Corey Chapman, 14 carries, 114 yards. Dustin May, 20 for 91. And both of those gentlemen had touchdowns. And Charlie Dotson, one for 15. And Gerald Epling, four for nine. Andrew Elkins was one out of two in the air, and Tim Honaker was four out of 10. On receiving, Gerald Epling caught the single reception for the Pirates for 21 yards. Jacob Sword had two catches for 12 yards, and Josh Staggs one for 14, and Daniel Harmon one for a minus three yards for the Pikeville Panthers. Kick returns, Devin Coher had two for 36. Charlie Dotson had one for eight, and they're missing one on there, Ken, a big one. Uh, Ted Honaker had two for 24, and Jacob Sword had two for 48. That must be only on the punts. Okay, that's And we'll, run, we'll run down the scoring real quick for you and wrap it up here. Belfry scores uh, the first time, first with two minutes, 11 seconds going to first quarter with uh, Dustin May carrying it for two yards. The kick was good, a drive of seven plays, 35 yards, took 344 off the clock. Tim Honaker scored the second touchdown of the ball game in the second quarter with 9.18 to go. And he had it on 22-yard run, and it was an 11-play drive for 77, 70 yards and 444 off the clock for Pikeville. The fastest play of the ball game was uh, Corey Chapman's 94-yard kickoff return. It didn't they don't even have, didn't even have much time it took off there, probably <laughs> <in> seconds. <laughs> and that made it 14-7, uh, to 7, which was our score at the half. Then in the third quarter, 4.18 to go in the quarter, Glenn Ernest uh, kicked a 25-yard field goal that capped off an 11-play, 72-yard drive that elapsed five minutes and 12 seconds off the clock for the Belfry Pirates, making it 17-7 to when it looked like the Pirates were going to run away with it. Then Ted Honaker comes back with a 72-yard run, a one-play, 72-yard drive that took 10 <laughs> seconds right. off the clock, so two big plays in the ballgame. Daniel Harmon. Uh, put Pikeville on top for the only time in the ball game with 9-12 to go in the ball game, and on a four-yard run, it capped off a two-play, two 13-yard drive after Belfry fumbled the football to make it 20 to 17, and then five minutes and 58 seconds to go in the ball game. Corey Chapman takes a 12-yard run into the end zone to finish out a seven-play, 67-yard drive that took three minutes and eight seconds off the clock and made your final score of 24 to 20, the Belfry Pirates. Tell you what, you don't see many better than that one, Charlie. No, was, you don't. It was great from beginning to end. Just, uh, just a great effort out here tonight with these young men. Great, great coaching and uh, just a fine night of football. Oh, absolutely, Ken. I mean, you don't, you don't see much better than this. I hope we see a little bit better than this tomorrow with the Pikeville College Bears getting a big win. Yes, yeah, so. sir. Wish the Bears the best tomorrow as they open up Mid-South Conference play against Campbellsville. That game will be live on WPRG TV 5 and WXLR 104.9 to kick off at 1.30 tomorrow. Charlie, you'll be on about one with a pregame. Uh, uh, wish the Bears the best. But, uh, that's going to wrap us up here tonight. Congratulations once again to Coach Philip Haywood and the Belfry Pirates as they win a tough one, 24 to 20 over the Pikeville Panthers. So uh, be sure and stay tuned and be with us throughout the rest of the season. That's going to wrap us up tonight. For Jerry Scott and Natalie at the radio station, for Shane Murray on camera, for Charlie Penson, this is Ken Hall saying thank you and good.